Welcome to the Avenue's special monthly broadcast of August Haven Live. I'm Steve March Toyme. This is our monthly show dedicated to taking a deeper dive into an independent artist and their music. August Haven's mission for this programming is to support artists in our community and to create an atmosphere where the community can gather to enjoy friends, music, and all the finer things in life as curated by August Haven. For now, this programming is broadcast only, but we do look forward to the time when we'll be together again at August Haven for this monthly show. Keep it tuned right here. We'll be with you till 7 p.m. with lots of music and interviews. It's all made possible by August Haven. So this month, I'm joined by Megan Slankard. Megan is a Bay Area indie singer-songwriter and a mile of music favorite known for her powerful, expressive voice and honest, heartfelt lyrics. Megan, welcome to The Avenue today. Hey, Steve. Thanks so much for having me. Actually, I should have said welcome back because uh, I remember meeting you. We were fortunate to have you on the August Haven stage in 2019. You were in town early for Mile of Music, and you joined our friends Bascom Hill for a couple of songs during our show. Yeah, 2019. Uh, that feels like so long ago now. Um, but that was a super fun show, and I adore Bascom Hill. Um, I remember just before we got on stage, we were all sitting on this really comfy sectional, like deep inside the store, singing harmonies, practicing a song we were going to do together while people were shopping for furniture. And they'd stop by and listen for a minute. And it was like, you know, a little strange and a little magical. It was such a good day. You were a big part of Mile of Music in 2019, acting as ambassador. So how did you first come to Mile of Music in this area? Uh, if you would, could you talk a little bit about your history with the festival and your connection to some other artists familiar to Avenue listeners like Bascom Hill and Jamie Kent and Matthew Slahetka? So I was first introduced to Mile of Music in 2016 through the Bose Troubadours, which was a touring songwriter group that I was a part of that included Jamie Kent, Slahetka, um, Bascom Hill. Um, they were the reason I started playing the festival. And we all played together that year. Uh, I think it was Mile 4. I just remember stepping into that world being like almost overwhelmed because just stepping into that first gig and playing for the mile audience for the first time, they've already accepted you. They want you to succeed. I mean, these are true music fans, not just the people who come to the festival, but the people who uh, run the festival. And when you are an artist there, you feel it. You feel loved. You feel taken care of. We're speaking with Megan Slankard, IMSMT. This is August Haven Live on 91.1 The Avenue. We're here till 7 p.m. We'll be bringing you more interviews and music from Megan Slankard, including a performance set from her in our 5 o'clock hour. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more in our next break. August Haven is a supporting partner of The Avenue. Let's take a listen to something from Megan. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Avenue special monthly broadcast of August Haven Live. I'm Steve March Torme, and today I'm joined by Megan Slankard. So many in our audience were first introduced to you through the Mila Music Festival, but you've been putting albums out since 2001. Your first was when you were 17. Wow. When did you first know that you were interested in music? And tell us how you got your start. I was 10 years old when I decided I wanted to be a musician. Um... It was kind of a 180 from my previous career paths of wanting to be a veterinarian or Lieutenant Uhura. But uh, I used to listen to all my parents' CDs and um, pretend that I was the lead guitar player in all of the bands. Well, I see we have something in common. I read that the Beatles played a role in your interest in music and that one of the best investments you made was to pick up the Beatles songbook. Yes, the Beatles were actually pretty much entirely the reason I am playing music today. And back when I was just starting to play guitar, my family got me for my birthday or something, the two volume complete Beatles songbook. And it took me a while, but I learned every single song. What a nerd. All right. So I have to ask, do you have a favorite Beatle? My favorite Beatle? It's almost like asking who your favorite child is, but Paul McCartney. It's definitely Paul McCartney. It's those melodies, man. We're speaking with Megan Slankard, IMSMT. This is August Haven Live on 91.1 The Avenue. We'll be back with more interviews and live music until 7 p.m. August Haven is a supporting partner of The Avenue. Let's take a listen to something from Megan Slankard next. Yeah. 
This is Steve March Torme. You are listening to 91.1 The Avenue special broadcast, August Haven Live. We're back with Megan Slankard. All right, so you're a California native, but you're based in the Bay Area, and you obviously get to Northeast Wisconsin pretty regularly. That's very impressive. What keeps you making the long trip back to our area? Oh, the mile of music, the people, the fact that original music is really appreciated here. I mean, it's it's a very tight community and a beautiful music scene, and I will not hesitate to make the journey. Pre-COVID, how much time did you typically spend on the road? Um, I usually spend in between 100 and 200 dates a year on the road. It sort of depends on what other projects I'm working on. If it's a super creative year, like maybe I'm working on a record, uh, I'll tend to stay put a little bit longer. Otherwise, I start getting a little antsy and miss my friends across the country. Megan, you've got a great rapport with our local audiences, and your solo performances are very personal. They're very conversational, very engaging. Talk about how you approach your performances and your connection to the audience. It's funny. When I first started playing music, I was so scared to play in front of real human beings. But now I think one of the ways that I deal with those nerves, because I still get them, um, is to connect with my audience. And that means sharing stories or sharing human moments, whether they're self-deprecating or embarrassing. I like to do it through humor. I think it breaks down some walls. And um, being on stage, it's it's not this um, you know musician singing at an audience. It's like a living piece of art where you're creating something together through a shared experience. That's the voice of Megan Slankard. I'm Steve March Torme. You are listening to ninety one point one The Avenue. Stick around. There's more August Haven Live coming up, including a performance set from Megan in the next break at 5 p.m. August Haven is a supporting partner of The Avenue. Let's hear something from Megan Slankard now.
Good afternoon, and welcome to the Avenue's special monthly broadcast of August Haven Live, the virtual edition. If you're just joining us, you might know this as the time of the month that we'd normally be gathered at August Haven to enjoy some live music and August Haven's famous hospitality. Well, while we can't do that just yet, we're still able to gather around the radio for a visit with some very talented musicians, thanks to our friends at August Haven. Joining us today, Megan Slankard. Take it away. There were times I was alone Dangerous to close to boredom The seeds living in my soul Were growing weeds And all my questions But the bones live forever Can you knock out the wind Before it goes on and chatters This rope last in the river Will the fibers get thin So I'll get in the water Home again It didn't take a lifetime I should lose my way much more often Keeps me always looking forward To scars of a sense of humor Could I bind out with the match and some paper next time you write a letter Go ahead, see little tries to the wire Whoa, whoa Sometimes I gotta put the whole thing down There's a whole lot of noise but not a lot of sound What with everything flashing in my face Reminding me to work and take my place I think I might have to run away for now mm. Well this is gonna help you save my life A little bit of sun and a whole lot of time this is gonna help you save my life This is gonna help you keep me inspired What a nice day Don't you stay inside I can see a nature boy Somewhere in your eyes What a nice day Don't you stay inside Don't you wanna I 
Damn, I gotta throw the TV out. Ba -da, ba -da. Save a whole lot of money and a lot of brain cells. Da -da -da. I know we're only trying to get by. Everybody wants a piece of everybody's time. We go crazy just trying to be ourselves. Well, this is gonna help you save my life. A little bit of love and a whole lot of sunshine. Oh, this is gonna help you save my life. A little bit of scenery on the outside. What a nice day! Don't you stay inside? I can see a nature boy somewhere in your eyes. Such a nice day! Don't you stay inside? Don't you wanna help me unplug all of the wires? What a nice day! Don't you stay inside? Don't you wanna help? I might have been alone just a little too long Might have got the TV keeping me warm Might have started talking to the walls again I ain't getting worried till I hear them talk back Oh, you know I'd rather take the chance Of going crazy on my own than with your craziness You got away pretty easily But you got something that I'm gonna need I might have started counting all the drinks I drink Might have started eating in the robe at the sink might have started dancing in my room alone Though I know my neighbor looks in my window Oh, you know I'd rather take a chance Than go insane with your crazy plans Broken hearts heal eventually You're still holding on to a part of me So I'm coming over even if I have to see you again So I hope you pay attention and I Break down your door If I have to, I'm coming in To get my record collection I wanna be nice But I ain't asking twice It's not yours to have I'm going anywhere that you get it back Me to the bone, might have stopped answering the telephone. Might have had some hard times getting out of bed, but I always found a way to get me out of it. Oh, you know, I never really had a chance. I was only your means to an end. You did a lot, but now I know you only love me for my record collection. I'm coming over even if I have to see you. Again, so I hope you pay an attention and I'll break down your door if I have to. I'm coming in to get my record collection and I'm coming over even if I have to see you again. So I hope you pay an attention. collection I wanna be nice but I ain't asking twice it's not yours to have and I'm going anywhere do you get it back Woo.
Thanks. This is uh, one from Running on Machinery called If I Knew. I should not have told the walls what you did Didn't hesitate a second before it slipped my lips And my heart, oh, it melted to its knees When I knew that you were done with me But if I knew, if I knew if I knew you, this should be the song I would have never sung along. I should have told my mother what I did. She loves me way too much to let me get away with it But my heart, oh, it melted to my feet When I knew what you had done to me If I knew, if I knew an iPod with my allowance this is what it 25 an hour is it gonna buy I'm going to drown you out it's like a pipe bomb when the volume hits the ceiling I think you might be singing along I got myself a dog the end of an alley This is what 825 little fleas look like I'm going to drown you out It's like a tiny thought When it grows into an action I think you might be playing along I've learned a lot, yes a lot But I don't feel very smart I'm going too far, too far, too far I have enough when I count, does it count when 
account working too hard too hard whoa oh. i made myself a basement where i'm keeping all your secrets it's another 8 25 in the morning and i just can't get down with vertical i'm feeling like a log but when the volume hits the ceiling I think you might be singing along I've learned a lot, yes a lot But I don't feel very smart I'm going too far, too far, too far Do I have enough when I count? Does it count when I count? I'm working too hard, too hard Whoa, whoa, whoa Sometimes when I, when I feel the end is nigh, is nigh, is nigh Everything out of focus, focus I turn it up and then I, I drown inside And no, I don't feel very smart I'm going too far, too far, too far Do I have enough when I count? Does it count when I count? Working too hard, too hard Whoa, oh, whoa No, I don't feel very smart I'm going too far, too far, too far Do I have enough when I count? Does it count when I count? I'm working too hard, too hard Whoa, oh, whoa It's a little song called Next to You Is that snow? I don't think so, but we'll tell the kids it is and let them play in it. Soft and brittle ashes from the neighborhood. And through the window, you can view the light show. It's a nothing like I've ever seen. Too amazed to do anything like even tell the kids to come inside You know I've never been to Barcelona I never learned to speak the language Many, many years ago when you won me over We never made time for this Oh, but Our bodies feel 
It's a song called You Got This. All the demons in your head I'm Trying to get you to go back to bed Watch you chasing dreams to say you never catch Sometimes it feels like they're gonna get away Sometimes I feel muscles ache eh, You wish you just had a break The floor is creaking, groaning under all the weight Sometimes it feels like it's gonna give away Maybe it is what you need to lean into the leap of faith mm. Come on, let's go Turn on the news You feel the engine of the news It's like we're cricket news And all the bolts and screws Sometimes it feels like it's All gonna break mm -hmm. Oh baby Would you let it rain You don't know nobody anything You know the sense of where it's out of sins Sometimes it feels like It's gonna lose the way Maybe it is all you need to lean into the leap of faith. Come on, let's go. Oh, let's go. Come on, let's go. You got this. Oh, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. You got this. Around the bend, eh, you can't see what's off the edge. There are not too many things I understand, but I feel like it's gonna be okay. Maybe it is what you need to lead into the leap of faith. Come on, let's go. Call whatever's next. Get your head up off of your bed. Get your feet on the floor and straighten your back. Then reach your hands out. Put your heart back in your chest. Turn and face whatever's next. Well, we always looked up to you. You always sitting on your perch like a big eyed owl. Choking on your smoke like an old Coupe de Ville Hands resting on your belly, always feeling it full And noising your tool about life, I guess Saying, honey, don't you give up yet? You tell me, get your head up Off of your bed, put your feet on the floor And straighten your back with your hands out Put your heart back in your chest Turn and face whatever's next Damn, it's been a hard year Watching the end of the world from a prison cell From a tiny little window where the moonlight spills See your face in the corner and it's giving me hell You know a thing or two about time, I guess Say, honey, don't you give up yet Just get your head up off the your bed Put your feet Remember, I'll be here when you're waking up, okay? If you need the chance.
That was Megan Slankard. I'm Steve March Torme. You are listening to 91.1 The Avenue, your local, independent, listener-supported radio station. Stick around. We have another hour of interviews and music from Megan Slankard. August Haven is a supporting partner of The Avenue. Welcome back to The Avenue's special monthly broadcast of August Haven Live. I'm Steve March Torme. As part of the monthly August Haven Live broadcast, August Haven chooses a nonprofit mission partner to support. And this month... August Haven is supporting the History Museum at the Castle in downtown Appleton. Here to talk about that is Dustin Mack, Chief Curator for the museum. The History Museum at the Castle in downtown Appleton was established in 1872. So uh, can you talk about the history and the evolution of the museum? The museum has a long history here locally. So like you said, it started in 1872 as the Pioneer Association. And it was just old settlers who wanted to get together and kind of have a summer picnic and reminisce about uh, what they considered to be the good old days. And eventually that association grew and a number of the initial members were beginning to die off and they um, wanted to expand the organization, welcome more people in. And so it incorporated in the early 1900s as the Outagamie County Historical Society. And that's still today what our legal name is. Um, We eventually bought the History Museum at the Castle, where we're currently located, which was a former Masonic temple in the mid-1980s, and have been gradually updating the building on the inside and making it function as a modern museum. And then we went through a rebranding in the early 2000s. So now we do business as the History Museum at the Castle here in downtown Appleton. Dustin, tell us about your background and role and, and what drew you to Appleton? I've always been fascinated by history. I got hooked as a kid doing family vacations. Uh, My parents would throw us in a minivan and drive across the country looking at museums or battlefields or what have you. And so I got the history bug doing that and went to college and studied history and and no one ever told me to stop. So I eventually got my PhD in American history at the University of Oklahoma. And when I was looking at what would come next, I had the opportunity to interview for the position here at the History Museum in Appleton as the chief curator. And I was really impressed by a couple of things. First, the museum does really cutting edge history. That, that's unusual for a small museum like this to really push the envelope. And this organization has become a national leader because of the topics and the type of history that it focuses on. And that was very appealing to me coming here. And then once I got to Appleton and I saw the town, it just seemed like kind of this all-American place that I wanted to raise my kids. And my wife and I are originally from Iowa. And so coming back to the Midwest felt comfortable. There were so many parks and people were friendly and it just seemed like the right place and the right fit for us. So it's been a professional and a personal success here in Appleton. So obviously it goes without saying that the pandemic has had a huge impact on the museum as you've had to close your doors. So tell us about what you've been doing since last March. We've been very busy at the museum, even though we've been closed to the public. So initially, when everybody went into a lockdown, we recognize this as a historic moment. So it's this is beyond anything that is happening here locally or nationally. This is a global event. And we wanted to try to capture what that looked like for people. And so we launched a project called Let's Make History, which was a community journaling project. And we asked people to document their day-to-day experience, either through writing or video blogs or what have you. And so we started started that program. It, it quickly caught on here locally, and then it was replicated. We had people across the country contact us asking how they could be involved, how they might start projects of their own. 
And so we've been collecting journals and artifacts and other things related to the pandemic over the past year. We've also been doing a lot of virtual programs and trying to make things available online to people. So that has been interesting and something that we weren't really doing in the, in the past. We also undertook a major renovation project for the building. So all of the windows in this, in this um, museum are being restored. Um, there's over about a hundred windows. And so they all have to be taken out from the inside. And a lot of this work is things we wouldn't be able to do with the public coming through. And so we've been restoring windows. And then on top of all of that, we've also been making plans for a new um, core exhibit that will be installed and it will be open early next year. It will focus on the, the region as a whole, this comprehensive history, and the exhibit is called You Are Here. So we've been going through the planning phases and getting ready for that exhibition to open. You have an interesting project called Get Up and Go History Tours. Tell us about that summer walking tour series. We are so excited to be able to offer this series again. So it's an annual walking tour series. The tours take place on Wednesday nights beginning um, in the summer and then they they go into the fall and each tour is focused on a different aspect of local history. So this year we've got um, an Edna Ferber focused walking tour. We have one on Jewish history here in Appleton. We have a pub crawl which is always one of our more popular um, tours where we, we go into these establishments, but we talk about the history of those bars and prohibition here in the area. And then we have um, kind of some Halloween themed walking tours that um, always sell out quickly. So we weren't sure with the pandemic whether or not we were going to be able to hold these this year, but they're all outdoors. We can social distance. And so no matter no matter what the future has in store, we're confident that we'll be able to bring these to people again this summer. And we're, we're super excited to do so. So Dustin, what has surprised you the most about the past year? Wow, that's a big question. I think it's been the, the good that it, this pandemic has shown in people. There's just been no end to the amount of stories of people going out of their way to try to make somebody else's life better or to be comforting for those people and to sacrifice yourself for, for others as far as wearing masks and washing hands and staying home. And this is a big ask of all of us to be able to do this, but we're, we're doing it as a group to try to keep other people safe. So I think that has been one of the, the big things for the year. But on the flip side there, it's also shown kind of the worst in people where, um, you know, people have been selfish and, and that is eye opening as well. Um, so, the, you know, you read about these things in, in history as a historian, I've read about pandemics in the past and always wondered what life would be like, never thinking you know, I would be in this place and, and experiencing it at the same time. So it, it gives me a new perspective on history as well about what it was like to live in challenging times and, and how you react to those. Moving forward in 2021, what does the future hold? The museum itself is planning to reopen, hopefully in this, uh, by the early summer. We don't have a date set yet we're, we're still waiting to see um, how things shift with uh, with public health that's always our top priority so we're but we're hoping to reopen by the early summer and we're excited to do that we're going to continue collecting journals and artifacts related to the pandemic and that telling that important story we're really looking forward to holding our walking tour series again for people and then we'll begin construction in the lower level of the museum to install this new core exhibit that we've been working on. And please tell us, how can the community support your efforts? When the museum does reopen, we hope that people, you know, feel safe and comfortable and come out and experience what the museum has to offer, take advantage of the exhibits that we have on display. People can sign up to attend our walking tours, and they can do that at our website, myhistorymuseum.org. And those are they're fun and they're informative and it supports the museum, but it's also entertainment and something to do outside of the house for, for the public as well. Then we hope people consider volunteering at the museum if they have time and always keep us in mind if you have historic photos or artifacts or things that that tell an important piece of local history. We're the place that stores that and we'll keep it indefinitely so that people that come after us 
know about the people who are here now because we we're living through history it's it's weird to think about that but every day we're making history and so we need to continue to document that story for the future thanks for joining us dustin this is 91.1 the avenues august haven live broadcast i'm steve march torme we'll be back with more interviews and music from megan slankard until 7 p.m august haven is a supporting partner of the avenue I'm Steve March Toime. We are back with native Californian indie rocker and Megan Slankard for our final hour of this August Haven live broadcast. So, Megan, you were one of the early adopters of the Patreon platform. That must have been a real blessing in the year that we just had. So uh, for those who may be unfamiliar, please explain what Patreon is. Hey, yes, I feel very fortunate. Um, seven years ago, my agent Casey Turner said, there's this brand new platform and you have to sign up. It has been a lifesaver. Um, for those who aren't familiar with Patreon, Patreon is a membership-based platform, let's say like Netflix, but for artists, where creators can share their work with their fans who become patrons. And those fans pay their favorite artists a small monthly fee to get access to, say, like exclusive art or pre-releases, behind-the-scenes looks. Uh, it's an amazing way to support artists for fans who want to have a more personal experience. And as an artist, you're able to build a community of patrons who end up feeling like family and who support the kind of art that you want to create. Uh, I think that subscription-based platforms like this really help put value back on art and it helps keep artists afloat so they can keep creating in this crazy world. You know, if Patreon didn't exist before, I think it would have definitely been created out of the pandemic. What role did your Patreon patrons play in getting you through the pandemic? I don't know that I would have been able to continue as a full-time artist through this pandemic without Patreon. I was unable to get pandemic unemployment, which in part was created for gig workers and self-employed people like me because of a random W-2 that I got for a gig. And I know it's been a challenging year for everyone, but just speaking for my industry, I know that artists and people who work in the music industry have really struggled. So having a community on Patreon that not only helps out financially, but also emotionally has been super invaluable. And I really recommend it for any professional creators of any type of content. How does Patreon and your commitment to it influence what you do? Do you think it helps your creative process? <laughs> Absolutely. As an indie artist, I tend to wear a lot of hats. I do a lot of my own booking and promo and social stuff and administrative work and et cetera, et cetera. And it's so easy to put creativity and writing songs on the back burner because it feels like you're taking a break when you're sitting down with an instrument and doing the things that you love. But really, it's one of the most important parts of an artist's job is to have music. And Patreon has made that a part of my job again because I have to create new content for my patrons every month. And being on the platform for the last seven years has helped me grow as a songwriter, a musician, an engineer, a producer, and has made me make creativity a part of my job again. We're talking with Megan Slankard. I'm Steve March Torme, and you are listening to August Haven Live on 91.1 The Avenue. Stick around. We'll have more with Megan coming up in the next break. August Haven is a supporting partner of The Avenue. Now here's something from Megan Slankard. That's a wrap. Shit half bad. Get me off to bed. Think I'm dying slightly. After a day like that. Always starts out dark. Sun started a bark. But it stabs like a fork. And nothing much forgets. About the way that we are And though I've got a heart Hanging around by the door I've got grace Hanging in the mirror And I've got you And I've got you And I've got 
don't argue We're tired of that too Spoons clink in our soup A world where it's so young It probably means that we're doomed You say nothing to me Return, forget how to speak In a mission of defeat Fear game for all I want a piece of our dream You're listening to The Avenue's monthly broadcast of August Haven Live, the virtual edition. I'm Steve March Torme. I'm joined by Megan Slankard. So this last year, you know, with the slowdown and the isolation, what was this time like for you creatively? Surprisingly, creativity has been sort of a challenge during the pandemic. I don't know if it's like overload or some sort of lack of motivation, but nothing about 2020 really screamed, let's get going. Uh, everything sort of came to a dead stop. And so there was a lot of reevaluating and reinventing and exhaustion. Uh, I know a couple people who've written novels during the pandemic. I am not one of those people. I am lucky if I remember to feed myself sometimes. Um, but I think that's okay too. You know, I think we go at our own pace and taking care of our mental health is real and important. And um, yeah, I'm just taking it one day at a time and leaving space to create. And if nothing comes out that day, that's okay too. You know, for many artists, this time was an abrupt interruption to scheduled plans and releases. Do you have some material that you've been saving to release until 
let's say the atmosphere is more conducive. So what's coming up for you? <laughs> yes, uh, I have been sitting on a double EP project for a year now that I meant to release uh, last October. And this we had this great tour scheduled, um, all of these awesome plans that uh, we had to modify. And uh, we decided to sit on the project until things open up again um, so that we can share it a little bit easier with our audience when things get rolling again. I am so ready. Well, COVID sure has changed all segments of the industry, not just artists, but obviously venues and technicians, sound people, etc. How do you see things moving forward for yourself? Absolutely. Yes. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like yet. I mean, I have this vision that it's kind of like emerging out of a cave after a long hibernation and the landscape has totally changed. Um, but I have this feeling that it's going to be okay. Like, um, maybe I'm going to be more intentional going forward. And um, I've been doing a lot more collaboration, which I absolutely adore. And I think I'm just going to concentrate on making art that makes me happy and continuing to tour around with people I really love playing music with. That's Megan Slankard. You are listening to 91.1 The Avenue's August Haven Live Broadcast, the virtual edition. I'm SMT. Stick around. We got more August Haven Live coming up. August Haven is a supporting partner of The Avenue. Let's hear something from Megan right now. Let's put life on pause. There's nothing interesting on but a tall, lonely latte breeze on the freeway. What's going on in your head? Can't figure out what I did. You love like you hate life. You're afraid. Yeah. 
You are listening to 91.1 The Avenue. I'm Steve March Torme, and this has been our special broadcast, August Haven Live. So we're back one last time with Megan Slankard. Wow, you have a very impressive resume. You've sold over 40,000 copies of your independently released CDs. You've won or been a finalist for several songwriting awards. You've toured extensively, including with Dire Straits co-founder David Knopfler. Wow. You opened for Jamie Cullum at the Fillmore. You played guitar on Jimmy Kimmel Live as part of the Jeff Campbell Band. You've had lots of other great collaborations. So let me ask you this. Has your career looked like you expected it to look? How has reality compared to your expectations? (laughs) <laughs> well, when I was 10 years old, I expected I would probably be in the Beatles by now. Um, but in reality, I actually really love the journey that I've been on. Nothing has really looked the way I thought it was going to go. You know, it changes from one day to the next. But I think that's what makes it really interesting and vibrant and a never ending source of things to write about. All right. Here's something I can relate to. I have to ask you about singing the national anthem to 45,000 fans at a Giants baseball game. So how did that come about? And tell us what that was like. I've had the absolute pleasure of singing the national anthem for our San Francisco Giants uh, several times now. And that came about through my agent, Casey Turner, who is an amazing promoter here in San Francisco. Um, It's maybe one of the most frightening things I've ever done. Well, I know in this climate, it's obviously hard to make plans. Any guess as to when you might be back in Northeast Wisconsin? We are just starting to think about potentially starting to make plans again soon. Um, It was heartbreaking to have to cancel an entire year's worth of festivals and tours. So we are being very kind to ourselves and very patient while we mentally prepare ourselves to get back into the swing of things. Maybe as early as this fall. But um, we'll see. And um, either way, I, I can't wait. Thanks for joining us. We want to thank everyone for tuning in. And thank you to our sponsor, August Haven. August Haven has created this unique event, which will continue in person once it's safe to do so again. Thanks to everyone at August Haven for their support of both the Avenue and the musicians that we feature in these broadcasts. August Haven is a supporting partner of the Avenue. Now, one more time. Here's Megan Slankard. The scene says you were on a boat A deeper ocean than most Not a soul around to help you or Unless I speak only of yours But it doesn't matter how I cry I can't wash you from my sight So maybe drowning in your sea Has a little bit And I pretend the 